I know you're into photography. Yeah, of course. Tell me, like, what do you like most about this camera? Like, explain it to me. Honestly, I want to say, like, depth of field. You can really make anything look like how you want it to look. Or you can even change the, pers- the what's the word, like, the um, perspective of how something is. So, like, changing, like, for example, the lens, you go with, like, a 50 millimeter as okay. opposed to like a 90 millimeter. So you can basically customize the experience. In exactly, exactly. You can make something that's like face to face with either far or flatter or with more 3D. Like you can really change perspective with a camera and how you do it. You know, you don't need an expensive $20,000 camera to really like do what it is you want it to do. You know what I mean? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. What's going on, Drift Fam? <laughs> we got Deshaun on the podcast. This man so, needs. Yo. No introduction. I've been knowing this guy since high school. Literally. Yeah. It's been a long time, bro. So I got him on the show because I feel like he's a graphic designer. And I feel like he's going to bring a lot of value to you guys. He's from Lawrence, Massachusetts. He works for Puma. He's doing it all. So right now, let's talk about your journey. Let's talk about Deshaun in general. Let's talk about who you were before you became the Puma graphic designer. Yeah. So initially, uh, I want to say like my graphic design journey kind of started off in college. Um, I was a psychology major, so it has nothing to do with, you know, uh, graphic design, but really like looking at a lot of people's, honestly, like SoundCloud really kind of started it for me. Like, but let's start uh, off in, let's start off in high school though. So let's go. So did you have aspirations to be this graphic designer in high school? So you I didn't. had no idea so, what I wanted all right, to do. So, let's start in high school because that's when we met. Yeah. I seen you, you know, tall kid, you know, with the, with the curly hair. <laughs> 130 <laughs> pounds. 130 Super pounds late. of wet. Yo, 130 <laughs> pounds of wet. I'm not even joking, bro. I'm going to link a picture in this video. Oh, damn. You're going to do me dirty. <laughs> I'm going to do you like that, bro. <laughs> but okay. 130 pounds of wet, bro. So, what were your aspirations when I knew you at that time? Like, what did you think you would be doing in said years? Honestly, man, like, jumping into freshman year at MST, uh, um, honestly, I just, I had no aspirations. And I think that was the main problem, like, in my life. Like, I was really kind of like, I wasn't sure of myself. And because I wasn't sure of myself, I was making a lot of bad choices and a lot of wrong decisions. So in the sense of, you didn't really know yourself. Exactly. Sense. And because of that, I didn't value what I already had around me. I didn't value, you know, the time that I had, you know, kind of like, just the opportunities that were around me and, and I didn't value education most like foremost like I really just didn't care about like school I just kind of went about every day like just a routine like all right wake up go to school come so you, back so you just lack so you lack self-awareness that's what it was exactly so you lack self-awareness and because of that you didn't know what you wanted to be exactly because okay. I didn't care what I wanted to be at that time and once I seen like I want to say my maturation process happened around like sophomore year going into my junior year Okay. Um, in that summer and just like looking at, you know, real conversations with my folks and even like with my friends, it's just like, yo, what are we going to do when high school is over? Like, like, you know, every weekend I was just chilling with my boys in the ESPs and just like not really doing anything. So you were, you were basically stagnant. Like you were just on the block or you were in the ESP, like you said, and you were just living. Yeah. You weren't really living. Existing. You were existing, existing but yeah. you weren't living. Exactly. Okay. So you weren't taking, taking control or... Taking advantage of your full potential. Yeah, exactly. I had no initiative. I just kind of just was just going stagnant. And like you said, stagnant. And just, I didn't I didn't have a plan. And I think that's like the main. Crucial. Exactly. Like okay. for me, I just, what changed for me was coming up with a plan. Like, yo, I don't want to keep failing school and just not having a future. Like after college, I, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. If not, I'm just going to end up like everybody else that I know like everybody else and not that that there's anything wrong with that but it's just I just wanted more you want to be different exactly do you do you put a little bit of blame on that even though obviously a, a blame com- comes to yourself and blame goes yeah. to other people but do you put a little bit of blame on your surroundings like were you surrounding yourself around people that were in that mindset like I'm gonna stay stagnant I'm just gonna live I'm just gonna exist and not live yes and no I feel like I feel like a lot of people kind of that's like an easy easy answer to be like oh yeah you know it's everything else but like in reality looking back on it it's like I had even going to like a school like MST like 
there's opportunities there. There's, you know, field trips and like little things, like little things that can kind of give somebody hope that can kind of like change your mindset, change your mindset. Okay. Yeah, it's, for me, like in my own opinion, my I was just lacking that initiative, that drive to really do something or to figure out what it was that I wanted to do after high school. Okay, and you said talking to your peers, like talking to people that you rocked with, yeah. um, helped you come up with initiative. Talking yeah. to your parents helped you come up with initiative. Yeah, exactly. What advice can you give to the kids that, you know, besides those two things, like for them, like, because a lot of people don't have friends. Right. And, there's, and there's a lot of kids and a lot of people out there that don't really have father figures or mother figures. They have fathers and mothers physically, but they don't have father and mother figures. Yeah. So, what advice can you give to those kids that, like, they don't really have those the fruits of those labors like what can you really tell them well I, I would say two things I would say like you said no five father figure find one find one whether it's a teacher whether it's uh, you know a program counselor whether it's you know the old man down the block like find somebody that you trust that knows that that respects you and feels like you feel like they have your best interest in, at heart okay and you search out those people and, and you try to gain knowledge from them. You can gain knowledge from anybody. It doesn't have to be, you know, like a big shot. It could literally be like just an old man in your neighborhood or someone that you feel like has your best interest at heart. You okay. seek those people out and you, you know, you ask them, honestly ask them questions just be like, you know, like, what did, what were you doing at my age? And that could really tell a lot about where you want to go and where that person came from as well. And I think the I second agree. thing for myself um, would probably just be like being very honest with yourself so like when you're not doing anything when you're not busy with school or work or whatever it is that you do on the daily you know you go home and you just take a minute and just look at your life and look at how it's going and just ask yourself am I cool with this or do I want more do I want to have more than what I have right now and if the honest answer is yes then you got to come up with a plan to figure out all right so what am I gonna do about it 100 percent and like i also try to preach on this podcast as well not try but i also preach on this podcast as well as like if you're doing something right now like so we're in the day and age we're like 20s a lot of us are in our 20s 90s if you're doing something right now that you can't live without that's how you know that you're doing what's right for you if you're doing something and you feel like oh if it stops today it stops right now and you'll continue living the same way that's how you know that's not your actual passion right. that's what i preach on the show it's like you can tell by those little things will tell you like how do you feel when you stop doing what you're doing today like how would you feel i'd be i don't know where i'd be <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm be honest <laughs> with without you. graphic design all right so let's go up to college okay yeah. so from what i know about you bro you took over salem state so he so this guy went to salem state class of what uh, 2018. 2018 shout out darwin <laughs> You know what I mean? Shout out to my cousin Donovan. <laughs> um, but so you went to Salem State, bro. And from what I heard and from what I seen, because I used to I used to party out there. I'm gonna keep it a stack. But from what I seen, you took over that school in terms of graphic design. Like that was your school, in my opinion. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. In terms of graphic design. In terms of flyers. In terms of things like you were the go-to guy for the flyers. The go-to guy for you know when something needed to be done. You were the guy. Yeah, I, honestly, like, I have to, you know, I got the cosign, so I don't have to say it, but, but so, yeah, for sure. How'd you go about maneuvering your way into becoming that person that people, you know, called upon? Because I even talked to my cousin Darwin, like you mentioned, and he mentioned, he's like, yo, Deshaun's really doing his thing with the graphic design. Like, he told me that. He go, he used to go to the school. He graduated the same class as you. So, like, how did you go about, like, maneuvering and building that clientele to the point where it's like, I'm that guy? I feel like good connections, it starts off with good connections. I mean, initially, um, when I first went to Salem State, um, I was flat broke. Like, I had no job, so I, you know, I went to find a job freshman year, um, and I was working nights at a, um, a Burger King on Highland Ave. If you're from North Shore area, you know about Highland Ave. And literally, I would walk, I would do the night shift. So when you walk back, there's no street lights on that whole block. Okay. And just like that hustle to like, it's just that hustle to be like, like it, it got to the point where my dad knew where I was going and where I was doing. So he would call me at night to just make be sure like, you got home safe. To make sure I got to the dorm safe. Yeah, exactly. Because I was working the nights because I was like, yo, I need money. Like school, of course I need that. I'm going to do that. But like, I can't be out here with no money. So it started off with that. And then honestly, like, honestly, a lot of my, a lot of people that were on campus and were like and a lot of people in general were, were dropping a lot of music at that time 
Okay. And it started off with like people would post like their selfies as their covers, and I'm like, yo, I could really do something with this. I could, uh, yeah, I could do something better than that. So it, so it all started with a vision. So like I feel like with in life, especially in life, like you can't do anything in life if you're looking towards progression without a vision. Exactly. So like. You have to be a visionary to some extent for you to like, you know, overcome things and just become that top person. Yeah. How does one become a visionary though? Like, I know like you, you had it naturally. Okay. It just came to you. You seen it, but like, like there's a lot of kids and there's a lot of people I would, that I would, I would follow disagree. each other. And not to cut you off, I wouldn't even agree with that. You don't, I, you don't agree with that. I don't think that it came naturally. It came with a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah, but like the mistakes are natural though. It's like oh yeah, nobody's life is perfect. You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right. So like it came naturally throughout your process. That's kind of what I mean. Okay. Not necessarily like you see you see something and <laughs> you're like oh vision. <laughs> you know what Got I'm it. saying? Yeah, like nah, naturally, okay. organically through your mistakes. Yeah. So there's a lot of kids that you know don't put themselves out there. There's a lot of kids that don't put themselves through the struggle. There's a lot of kids that stay sheltered. They stay in one specific spot because they're scared of that. So, what advice can you give to the kids that don't put themselves out there as much, that can't learn from those mistakes? You ain't gonna learn until you try. So, if you if you don't do it, you're not gonna get nothing. You know what I mean? Like, even mm -hmm. if you, like, you could put it in the prospect, even if, like, you put it in a simple concept, like, you're at a party, and you see that girl over there, and okay. you've been eyeing her for a minute, and you're like, damn, like, I wanna go talk to her. But then you're gonna just stay there and not say nothing. And okay. then the party's gonna end, the lights are gonna turn on, and then you're gonna go you just home. Just miss the opportunity. Exactly. So even if you walk up to to the shorty and she you know she's not interested, and she like brushes you off. At least you know, like you know what, I shot my shot. Exactly. Like, There's no it? regrets. There's exactly. no what. Exactly. It's like you put exactly. yourself out there, and she could have been feeling you the whole time, but it could have been you your insecurities. Know. It could have been your lack of confidence, your lack of self awareness that you basically shut yourself down. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so you'd say for the people that are watching that people need to put themselves out there in order to find out yeah. what's really for them in order to become that visionary, in order to become that person. For sure. People are afraid to look whack. That's the number 100%, one. hundred percent. That's bro. the number one problem. Like people like, well, well, what's the word? It's because of social media, bro. Literally, yeah. social media, bro, is a platform, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook yeah. of perfectness. Yeah. I don't know if that's a word, but <laughs> perfectness, perfection. bro. For perfection, yeah. perfectness, whatever. But social media is a platform where you highlight all your achievements and you never talk about your failures. Yeah. From what I've noticed. And it's like a lot of people are scared to look whack because on social media, nothing is whack. Everything is supposed to be perfect. Unless you're following the shade room or gossip <laughs> channels. But okay. everything yeah. is supposed to be perfect. Like for sure. Just think about it, but let's think about it logically, bro. Not even logically, just, just think about it in general. On Instagram, but what do you post? Your best memories. Yep. The best. You probably took 50 pictures, bro, and picked the one. Yeah. You're supposed to your best picture. You're supposed to your best everything yeah. on social media. And that's what people are scared of, bro. And it comes down to judgment. People are scared of being judged. Yeah. And that's what I try to pre that's what I preach on this podcast as well. It's like you can't be scared of the opinions of others if you genuinely know yourself. So once oh, you yeah. know yourself, once you get that self-awareness. You're not going to care about what Deshaun says yeah. or, or Bastion Drift says or J. Ray's design says. You're not going to really care what we say. For At sure. the end of the day, the only opinion that's going to matter is your own. Exactly. And that's what I want to preach in this podcast. It's like self-awareness, put yourself out there, and that's where the real level of growth is going to come from. Exactly. Okay. You can see that. So let's go to the graphic designing. Like, What about graphic designing like catches your attention and tells you like, yo, this is for me. Like, When you're doing it, how do you feel? And how would you, how would you tell somebody who wants to get into it? What advice can you give to the people that want to get into it for them to know that that's for them? To answer your first question, um, I feel like what kind of got me into graphic design was like, it's progression. So for example, when I started, I started off doing rap covers for local artists on like my phone, literally my iPhone. I had no programs. I didn't have the Adobe CC, the Creative Cloud. I didn't have any type of programs. And I literally started off on my phone, just doing everything on my phone. And like you said, like I wasn't afraid to be whack because I knew that at least I was doing something and I was putting it out there. And just like a lot of people, like even now with the quarantine, not to go off, but like, how you notice like a lot of people are starting businesses a lot of people are doing you know clothes but or, that's because it's trending though See, okay. okay a lot of people are that's doing fair. those that's things fair. bro you gotta realize bro that's like fair. i have to cut you off my father yeah, cut you off you, you um but a lot of people are doing these things because 
being an entrepreneur, bro, is a trend. Podcasting is a trend now. Yeah. Look at how many podcasts are starting up now in our city. It's a lot. Yeah. Look at how many entrepreneurs, bro, there's a new, bro, I go on, on Instagram and Twitter, there's a new entrepreneur every day. They're selling, they're even selling nails, bro. They're selling nails, they're selling chips, <laughs> they're selling everything that you could possibly sell, bro. Sure. They're going to try to sell it. But For I feel sure. like in terms of quarantine, things like that, it's like, bro, just remember all the raffles and things that are going on, bro, all the trends. A lot of the, a lot of things that have to do with social media, it's trends, but back to what you were saying. I just have to. Nah, nah, I, I mean, I 100% agree with that for sure. And, um... Kind of when I when I started with doing the covers, and I was putting it out there, and I was doing it either free or cheap, and I was just like, yo, like I know you got music. I was hitting random people up, either people that were high or people that were just like, yo, I'm just putting it out there. I only got 12 followers. I was like, yo, like I could do your cover for you, like just to get practice, just to get better, just to learn. And that was one thing I was doing. And then the second thing, I was like three phases. So the second thing I was doing is literally learning. But the problem was, is I had a major in psychology and that's what I was studying. I couldn't afford to change my major um, and stay for school another two years. So it was like on the side, I was taking classes that weren't even part of my major doing that. I was going on YouTube. I was going on Google and just doing mad like hands-on homemade research like all right this is how you change font sizes this is how you do like the simplest things and just building off of that and once i felt like i was in a comfortable place to like put out covers and stuff like that i would literally just dm people like obviously if you dm drake you're not gonna get a response <laughs> but if you dm dave east you might get a response okay so that's what i was doing like, you gotta know who to dm but you yeah. should still shoot your shot you never know you never know for, <laughs> for sure, sure for sure um, and that's pretty much how it started. Initially, my first big um, platform was uh, for that. For that phase was um, Um P. He's a battle rapper. Um P's fire. I seen. Yeah. I actually, I seen that cover. And he he grabbed the cover and put it as his own, right? Yeah, on his SoundCloud. That that was the first major. How'd one. that feel, bro? It was good. Talk about like it. honestly, like I feel like for me, like the, when I speak about progression, I'm just speaking about in terms of validation. And not validation in terms of you need anybody's approval, but more like I needed validation for myself. Like, all right, this is going somewhere. And initially it started off with that. And literally like, it'd be like six months of just doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And then you get a little like spot, spotted, like a spotlight moment like that. Even if it's not, it's not huge, it's not huge, but it's spot, it's, it's big It lets you me. know, it lets you know you're doing something correct. Exactly. It basically like tells you like, yo, the work you're putting in, bro, it's don't stop. Exactly. And it's going somewhere. I see, I see exactly, I see exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like with whatever you're doing, like you can go hard, bro. And like for you, it was six months. For somebody else, it could be three years. Yeah. Like literally, bro, you could pop off and go viral on the third year. Yeah. So like, don't look at his journey and say, oh, Oh, if six months happens, then I'm not going to be da da da. No, like everybody's journey is literally different. Exactly. But you got to grow within that process too. For sure. Like you cannot be the same person and then, or do the same thing the same way. And then in three years, like you said, it, it's not working. Like insanity, that's literally the definition of insanity. You're doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Different result. So literally, like as I was building get into those spotlight moments you get created exactly and gaining knowledge and gaining skill sets and, and and learning new things about graphic design it's it's a web you can do a lot of different things like my next spotlight moment probably wasn't for another year after that was when i got a placement on um joel santana's um, mixtape cover so i dm'd him Nice. And we we spoke for a little bit. He even posted it. Joel Santana, the one that's on TV. Dipset, Dipset. Yeah. yeah, for his uh, mixtape, uh, the wow. Get Back, I believe was what it was called. And but this was prior to you know his arrest. So that's where like it didn't end up materializing physically, but another one of those moments where it's just like validation, like yo, like like yo, he posted it. It got like fifty thousand likes. I got like that night. I woke up that morning because he had posted it like around like a later time. And literally that morning, I woke up to like 86 DMs. Like, damn. I was like, yo, people from everywhere. And, and, mo and most of it, you know, didn't materialize into anything. People, you know, talk a good game. But like, it would, it let me know that like. You're fired. Your work yeah, is hot. Like, like I'm doing something. Doing like, something. yeah, I'm doing something that, that it, it, it speaks to people. Because, yo, me and him had like a thread of a conversation. Um, again, unfortunately, it didn't materialize because he had gotten arrested after, shortly after. But like, it just let me know. That like yo, if you keep doing this, you never know what who's gonna like. Yeah, you. like you got two, yeah. like you got Umpi, you got Jewel Santana, yeah. 
it's like you don't know who could be next, bro, because they have a platform as well. Exactly. So once they post it, bigger than mine, it's for sure. Bigger than everybody's around here, bro. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so once they post it, bro, you're gonna know it's like, okay, there's a possibility of Drake seeing it. There's a possibility of future. Yeah, All Davies those liked the post. Like, Davies when liked you the look post. Look at the like who liked it. He was one of the people that liked it. It's crazy because like that shit. Excuse my language. That I did it off my phone. Like, I didn't okay. even do it on the computer. Like, most graphic designers, you know, they got the, the Adobe Cloud and they do it everything. At that point, I didn't even have enough money to pay for the cloud. So, that was so in I, the beginning. That was the very, like, this was, like, early stages. So, what? Yeah. So, so all right. So, let's get a little timeline going here. So, you're freshman, sophomore, junior year. Like, which which year are you? Sophomore? At, at that point, this was probably my, yeah, and the second semester of my sophomore year at that point. Second semester of your sophomore year. Yeah, okay. that sounds good, yeah. Let's go towards the end. Towards the that. end, I kind of build it from just doing the covers to now doing a whole bunch of services for people, whether it was uh, flyers. Yep. At that point, I learned a, a little bit more about photography. I started taking graphic design courses at, at Salem State. I took two, even though, you know, they were kind of... They ain't really doing nothing. Yeah, they're, they're rudimentary. Like, <laughs> it wasn't th nothing that I didn't learn on my own. And that was a, that's another thing. Like, I feel like the future of just learning in general it has to be by yourself by yourself youtube trial and error and then that that's how you learn you'll learn a lot more in a lot faster time frame because i feel like even though i was learning in those classes like it, it, it was such a slow process because now you got to wait i'm in a class of 25 people i gotta wait for them to catch up exactly to where I'm at. yeah um and that's not even on not to be cocky it was just like i'm like i'm I'm already done. Like, I, exactly. What's next? And I don't really, and that's why I don't really agree with the way the school system teaches people, because they teach people as if everybody learns the same way. Yeah. Like that is insane to me. Like, how are you gonna teach me, Michael Bastin, who's yeah. different than Deshaun? Yeah. Like, I can be a visual learner, and you can be an audio learner. Like, you can learn from hearing the voices, and I'm a visual learner, so I know how to learn. I know everybody does not learn the same. Yeah. So that's why, I like, when it comes to school, it's like, I encourage people, yeah, go to school, do your thing. But at the end of the day, if you find what you do. You could go to school on the side, but lock into your actual passion because that's what's going to lead to financial freedom. Absolutely. For sure. Like, you're not going to make, you're not going to become a millionaire working a nine to five. You got to become financially free to get to the next level. Yeah. And that's kind of the journey that I'm at right now. That's like I'm trying to meet certain steps to kind of gain that freedom that you're speaking about. Um, and I, I've been, you know, I'm Making close. Moves. I feel like I'm real close. Like, 100%. Not even in terms of just my not even in terms of my finances or my career, but just like my personal life, that's where like I'm at a place where I'm I am putting work as a priority, but it's no longer the main priority. It's not my main focus at the moment. I'm putting myself in there as well cuz during that those early stages it was all about the work. And I, I think it still is it's definitely still is now, especially cuz I'm getting paid for it a lot more, but but I have to make sure I'm good. So yeah. like my 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 next couple of goals is making sure I buy a house within the next year or two, paying off my student loans. Like, literally, I graduated two years ago. By December, like, a couple months from now, I've already been done paying off all my student loans. I'll be debt-free. Wow. Like, and that just came from, like, the work ethic of just, like, coming up with a plan, being like, all right, I want to pay it off in this amount of time. Damn. Coming up with ways to kind of, you know, form that plan together. Because you got to make sure it's realistic. You can't just... Form a plan that's like, oh, I'm just going to go do it. And, like... You're just going to say yourself over disappointments. You have to, yeah. a logical, calculated plan. Exactly, exactly. And I kind of came up with a strategy and executed it. And now I'm at a place where I can see it coming to work. I mean, hey, man, there's a lot of college students that are going to watch this, bro. So if you can give us a little gist of what your plan is. So. <laughs> a small, you have to go, yeah. go that deep. But like. Yeah. So initially when I got out of school, I was actually working for American Student Assistance at that time because I had my degree in psychology. And I was working as a counselor, but um, with, and we specialize in doing fasters and doing student loans. Okay. Um, and literally, what I was learning was that like the way that student loans are set up is set up for you to pay it for more than the ten years that they allot. So any standard student loan plan is about ten years. There's no way physically, like let's say I well I, I'll put myself an example. I owe thirty thousand dollars in student loans, which ain't even a lot. Cause I, I, I would worked a lot while I was in school, paid off a lot. 30 grand is not even that much. But you know, if, if you're looking at a bill for 30 grand, you're like, holy damn, like that's, yeah, that's exactly. a lot of bread. So 
the way I came up with that plan was I looked at my options. Okay, I wasn't making a lot of money coming coming fresh out of school. So I looked at my options at different programs. The one I chose that was right for me was an income-based repayment plan. Okay. And what that is, is that you kind of establish where you're at in terms of how much you're making, mm-hmm. your profit, and then your debt. And then you send it, submit it over to um, wh- whoever your loan provider is. This is only for federal loans. And what they do is they'll come up with a plan based on those two increments of how much you should be paying a month. So I was down to zero. To, pay, I, to pay it off in a certain amount of time. Yes. Okay. But it, it, it would be less than what the original payment. Original payment is probably like around $300 for me. I didn't have $300 a month to spend on that because of the amount of money I was making at that time because I was still an intern. So they looked at it. They're like, okay, you have this amount of money and you base it on your last year's taxes. So last year as a student, I, w- I was working at Burger King. That was it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't making no, no bread like that. So they look at it. They come up with a plan that like you, you can pay zero dollars a month and pay whatever you want on the side as residual. So what I was doing was use taking that and using it as an example. Like I was making zero dollar payments, but what I was doing was saving money on the side and paying off an entire loan at a time. Because as you know, like with federal student loans, you get the unsubsidized, the subsidized, you get all these different types of loans. You have to do the math on how much it would be with with interest. Okay. And what I would do is targeting the loans with the highest interest rates because those are usually the ones with the smallest principal. For sure. Yeah. Targeting those, I would save up money as I was working. I was only making fourteen dollars an hour, but I would save up. All right, I paid off a whole loan at the time, at a time, and literally it went from instead of thinking it about yo thirty thousand dollars, I was doing it like it was split up into eleven loans. You pay off one loan, then one loan, then one loan, and that's how I was doing it. Okay. And that's how, now I'm at two loans left. I think that's really important because like a lot of kids like, especially when they get out, it's six months after you graduate, right? You gotta start paying. The grace period, yeah. The grace period is like six months, so it's like they just think, oh, I'm gonna give the minimum work and give the minimum. It's like, bro, you're gonna be paying loans for the rest of your life. Yeah. It's like you have to, like he said, come up with a plan. Like you have to come up with an actual plan to pay off what you actually need. Yeah. So let's go into. Hold up, real quick before we switch off. I just want to mention, like, it, it, what you just said is very important because I want people to understand, like, what I'm saying physically. So imagine you owe twenty thousand dollars, and they say you have to give me a hundred dollars a month, and it's over ten loans over a course of ten years. They take your hundred dollars a month, split that up into ten different loans. That's ten dollars per loan, and then they put that only toward mostly towards the interest of maybe like three to four percent. So in reality, for principal, for each of the 10 loans that you have for $20,000, you're only paying $2 a month. Damn. How are you going to pay off that in 10 years? There's no Man, way. That's a business, bro. That's, that's what they're doing, bro. They're that's playing, what, That's what they're doing. Like, it's they're like you need, to, you need to think in a different way, bro. You don't need to think outside the box. You need to actually come up with a plan. Exactly. Exactly. My fault. Well, it was, nah, 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 nah. It's dope that you actually said that because it's like a lot of people don't really know that. Nah. Like they don't teach you that in school because they're not going to teach you that because of course not. <laughs> they try to charge you, but they don't teach you that anywhere. So it's good that you actually mentioned. That's why I'm, that's why I asked you the question because there's college students that are in debt right now or people that are out of college that are just in debt in general and yeah. they don't know about that. They just know oh, I'm going to pay what I can. Like, bro, come up with a plan, save up your money and attack, attack, attack. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. You got to be aggressive. You gotta, you gotta be really be aggressive. aggressive and that's what anything you do financially like right now financially we're in such a a, a a curious time because no one knows what the market is gonna be like six months from now most of the time like even forget about like stocks and stuff like that but like people can estimate what the market is gonna be like every six months based off of the previous of previous, previous year, trends previous trend exactly we're at a time where it's like COVID hit bro yeah and, and we don't know where, and it depends on where you live, your cost of living. What's being said exactly. on the news. Exactly. Who's doing what? What Trump's going to do? <laughs> Honestly, it's like you really don't know. Like these people are making plans on your life and you have no idea. No idea. Because you're looking at, you know, Cardi being offset, broke up, and that's what you're paying attention to. That trends and goes viral, and that's what you want to watch. That's what you're looking at. You're not looking at the fact that, you know, they're trying to take away Planned Parenthood, and that comes up with half of the medical assistance that you need as an individual coming from a low income community. You're not looking at, you're not paying attention to that. So, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're trying to distract you guys, bro. 
pay attention. Open your eyes. Absolutely. So let's go on to, so you graduated college. Yeah. I know everybody's waiting for this question, the Puma internship, how you got it. Yeah. Tell us about that process. I'm genuinely really <laughs> curious about that. Sure. So I'll start a little bit behind that because uh, there's an important story with that. When I started, when I was working at American Student Assistance, it was my last semester of my college years. And, you know, because I had a psychology degree, um, it just made the most sense to stay there. And the way the contract was set up, it was only every 30 days. I wasn't even a full-time employee. I was working full-time hours because I had gotten out of school. By that, then I was like, yo, I could work more hours. They gave me more hours, of course. But I was only on a 30-day contract. So every month, the next month, I had no idea if I had a job. Coming out of college, that's pretty like, yo, crazy, it's bro. scary, yeah, because you got to figure that's it risky. out. That's really risky. And I was doing that for about eight months. And literally eight I, months, eight months. So you had eight months of anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much, bro. And I couldn't take it anymore. So I was like, listen, in my head, I was like, all right, if they're not going to give me a job, I'm going to have to find something else. That way, if they fire me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be good. Okay. So as I was looking, I was, you know, doing the typical thing, go Indeed and just like put your resume and just sign up for whatever. And you pay like. You're looking, I'm looking at it based on money because I have a degree. I'm like, all right, I should be making X amount of dollars. Put that in the field, put you know my location in the field and see what pops up. And literally it was, I was getting interviews for jobs that I didn't even know what I was applying for. And I'm like, yo, I'm not feeling this at all. Like, so what I, what I kind of thought of doing was like, instead of looking for a position or like a, a job description that I'm looking to do, look for a company that I'm trying to work for okay. and see what they have that relates to me. Um, and at that time, um, in the midst of that job search, I was actually on um, social media. I had followed, you know, I follow a bunch of, like I, even now to this day, I follow more people than people that follow me. Just like based off of information and inspiration and things that I want to be, that I want to see on my feet, positivity, all that. So there was, um, I was following Puma and they had had a contest um, for like, oh, like, you know, send us your Instagram and do, you know, fill out this field. Like you swipe up and you fill out the field. And what we'll do is we'll pick X amount of, like, I think it was like 10 people to, and we'll send them a disposable camera the, and we'll send them our newest shoe, take a picture of the shoes be creative with it and then send it back to us and you can keep the, sh the shoes. Then you sent to 10 people? Yeah, 10 people out of however many people follow the but page. How did, but how'd they go about picking the, the people? It was 10 random people? I think they you put your Instagram handle in the as part of the questionnaire of what it is they wanted you to fill out. And I think they look at your handle to see like what you got going on to see if you're, you know. If you're a good fit. Yeah, you're a good fit for what they were doing. So I, wow. you know, I took a picture. I took the, I did a little mini shoot with the disposable camera of the sneakers. Um, there, there were the Cell Venom, Puma Cell Venoms. They hadn't came out in 20 years. They were re-releasing re the sneaker for the first time in the last 20 years. And I was like, yo, like that was, it was dope to me to do that. So I was like, you know what? Let me see if they're even, if they are hiring. Worst case, they say they no. Just say no, yeah. So I look, and they had an internship position. I was looking for a full-time job because I had been working at that internship for the past eight months, and I was struggling. But I was like, you know what? Let me just shoot my shot. Let, let me just go for it. Submitted the, the you know, they, it was a couple of rounds of interview, phone interview, regular interview, um, cover letter with the resume, with the portfolio. So you went through the whole process, basically. Yeah, okay. and when it came time for the interview, this was like, I want to say December of 2019. Um, the interview process came and I um, let my boss at my at ASA know, like, you know, I um, got an interview. I got a couple of interviews. I wanted to let you guys know in advance that, um, you know, I, I got a couple of interviews and that I might be leaving soon. Because, and they knew my status of like, like, I need a job. Like, this is just an internship. Temporary. It, it was just temporary. And so... Going into the interview, we were, I want to say I waited. I had no idea where it. So they sent me an address on Congress Street in Boston. 
right next to the Haymarket, and I had no idea. Like I'm not, I don't go to Boston often, so I was lost. So I went, I was like searching around. I found initially found the spot, and I go up there in the office space, and you know I'm like oh, I'm here for the interview, and the sneakers that I shot for the photography for the Instagram contest, I actually wore to the interview. Okay. Partially because I didn't have any Pumas. And <laughs> and at that time, I was like, yo, like maybe because it was the same business unit that I had did the photography for, I was like, yo, hopefully I can, maybe someone will recognize me. So as I'm sitting in the lobby. That's a good way of thinking, bro. My yeah. father cut you off, but it's like, yeah. you really put on the sneakers that yeah. you shot yeah. To show that, and it kind of like showed them that, like, oh shit, you know what you're doing. Like, exactly. And it resonated with you and your like portfolio. Okay. Yeah. Mind you, them shoes did not fit. Them <laughs> shoes were a size and a half too small, and what? my feet were killing. But I was like, yo, I cannot pull up to the interview wearing a competitor shoe. And on top of that, these shoes ain't out, weren't, hadn't been released yet. Okay. So when the, my, who was my old boss, shout out to Marielle, when she pulled up to the, um, the lobby where I was sitting and waiting, she's like, the first thing she did was go, how'd you get those? <laughs> and then, and and I was like, oh, I'll, I'll tell you more about it. So we get into the interview and she's like, no, but seriously, those units haven't been sold yet. How do you, how did you get your hands on a pair of those? And I was like, I actually shot these shoes for you guys. And that's what, what was the icebreaker. And it turned from that interview, it turned into a conversation. Once I spot that, and she's like, oh, where from? Da, 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 da. And we just continued. And that was literally the icebreaker. It From that point, it was less about an interview, more just a conversation. Like, about okay, like, yeah, so. who are you? Like, exactly. How'd you do it? Exactly. Like, what was your process behind it? Exactly. And what is it you want to do? What is it that you want to do? Yeah, exactly. Like, so like you use the creativity to your advantage. Exactly. Because to be honest, like that's, that's what you got to really do. Bro. You got to really be creative and... Because everybody's going to come in, like, trying to impress the person. Like, yeah. what's going to make you really stand out? Exactly. Stand and, out. That's and, the most And you literally, thing. like, that's a really good idea. Yeah. I'll use that next time. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and literally, I just, it, after then, I had gotten hired as, uh, as uh, the official title was a graphic designer. A graphic design intern for Puma Sports Style. Sports Style is the fashion business unit within yeah. Puma so you know like how there's soccer and uh, basketball and all these other business units that was a business unit that I was assigned to um, so like all right so I'll pause you right there so like yeah. what do you do like in general like so on a day-to-day -day basis on a regular day like what do they ask you to do like for example they like explain the process of what they ask you to do and once they send it out what do you actually do and what do you send to them okay Gotta be careful how I word this because I actually have an NDA, so a non disclosure agreement. So there's certain things I can't talk about, but, um, and I'll fast forward a little bit from that internship because that internship, I was in there for about a year, and what I would, I would go initially into meetings where they were discussing how they were going to create ideas for marketing products that they were going to sell in the future because obviously they do everything like uh, six to six months six to twelve months in advance okay like everything like so whatever they're shooting now is for next year or the year after and so at that point i'm in these meetings i'm coming up with you know these um presentations for the meetings and kind of putting things together oh, let's pause right there you're coming up with presentations so you're the one that's you're telling everybody oh this is what i'm doing this is how it's supposed to be done like you're in front of like a group of people or well, are you just building the presentation i'm building i'm literally building the presentation physically for, for somebody else exactly okay. so that's how i started um with the company and for that specific business unit so they'll be like you know we got the you know rsx sneaker we're dropping the next year these are the ideas that we have and i put the presentations together of what they would do in these pitches and stuff like that and it, it, it initially was just that it was just that um on the side i was sneaking in <laughs> to the studio because puma had has its own photography studio and just you know checking around looking at the equipment you know using the equipment just to like mess around within my own free time and um initially that's when i knew like all right i'm gonna have to at some point what's the next step okay within the company because i was still an intern um so i would um i was looking i talked to my boss mario chopping it up and i just want to be like hey listen like i don't know if this business unit has anything has the next step for me but i do want to take 
the next step within the company. And so, so you um, expressed that to her. So yeah. she knew she knew where you where you stood in the sense yeah. of like I don't want to be an intern forever. Exactly. Okay. You gotta be honest. Like we're in the corporate world, like and we're all adults. Like nobody has to like, you know, pass it. Maybe you or yeah. cater to you. Or, yeah. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. You just tell somebody, listen, I'm not really, I'm not feeling this, and at some point I'm gonna need to move in a di- different direction. At that point, I had been there for I want to say at least a year as an intern. And I was like, yo, like, this is awesome. It's a great opportunity, great company, but I need to do more. Like, I see myself doing more. And so I just expressed that in a, you know, respectful, professional manner. Let her know. And and she kind of gave me her blessing. She's like, yeah, yeah, definitely look within the company. Look as if you're an applicant that's not working here. What is it you want to do? And so I went across a couple of different options. But one that stuck out was the production artist, junior production artist was the, the official title. And it kind of had everything that I was looking for. I applied for the position and then I let my boss know, hey, listen, I applied for this position. And she's like, that's funny because the person that's managing that position, I helped them create that position. So I'm going to I'm going to jump you. I'm going to yeah, jump yeah. you in the line for the interviews. OK. And then I interviewed for that position. I think I did three interviews for that one position and then that same I wanna say that same week I I got the call, I got hired. Okay. So you expressed how you felt. Yeah. Like an adult. Yeah. You were stern. You weren't too aggressive, but you were like direct. You yeah. told me like, oh this is what I wanna do. I don't see myself being an intern for this long. Yeah. And it actually worked in your favor. Yeah. I feel like that's important because a lot of people don't wanna take that step because they're either intimidated by their boss. It's like you gotta take a step back from that and actually just go and do it yeah exactly sure and like so let's talk about like when did you start seeing like traction in the business like you were obviously like you know building flyers you were doing flyers you were doing not flyers but you were doing what they were telling you to do but when do you start seeing like my work is actually mean something in this business like what was the yeah. thing that showed you that your work meant something i want to say because I have been, I've been in this role for, I, I want to say, just over a year, about a month ago. Um, and with this role, kind of what they have me doing initially is I was as a junior production artist for e-commerce specifically. So I work with uh, all the business units, not just sports style. And what they would have me do for North of Puma, North America. And what they would have me do is work on mostly just emails or site information pieces for like the website so when you go to like puma.com you know those pieces i help build that and emails so when you go to puma. so so let's talk to the audience so when you go to puma.com what like what is going to be shown images with like it'll be like a picture of like Kyle kuzma shot basketball boom that whole that se- that section i was in charge of building you know what I mean? And I build that section for the website because it's always changing because there's always okay. new products, always new initiatives, always okay. new sponsorships. So I'm always, they, they'll, you know, send me assignments to work on those type of things for the website and for emails as well because obviously there's always sales coming up, new products. And they let you be as creative as you want. Like they let you do just about, what, or like, is the, are the emails specific or can you be like your own self, like your own natural self with your creations? It depends on what it is the email is for. So if it's like a generic type of a generic email, they'll let you get a little bit more creative. But if it's something specific for like a collaboration or like a partnership with an ambassador, they'll be really more specific. But then even within the the bubble of, you know, having a little bit more creativity, there's brand guidelines that, that I have to follow. And there's um, certain ways and certain things that I can't step outside of what the brand usually does to keep it as consistent as possible. Do you think this job kind of kills your creativity? Do you think it kind of gets in the way? At one point, it it, not not that it killed the creativity, but it was like a machine. Like it was always, you you know, it was like a you felt like a factory worker in a sense. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Exp- I wouldn't say it in that way. But but to that extent, at yes. But because it had, was so, it was so structured. Yeah, it was very. It, that's a that's a more appropriate word. It was definitely structured. They had 
you know, their way of doing things. And obviously it's a brand, so it's like they're gonna stay true to the brand and you have to respect that, especially sure. if you're working for the brand. Um, and where I kind of grew within the position was that my new boss, Joanna, shout out to Joanna. Shout out Joanna. Um, and <laughs> um, she kind of, I kind of expressed those type of things to her and just like, hey, like, what else can I do within the company that, you know, and I expressed, I showed my talent and I had my portfolio ready and I showed my talents for videos and photography. And with that came opportunities to do new things and with even outside of my role, but that they still needed support with. Because a lot of times what happens is that without, with these production, at least within my role as a production artist, whatever things that, you know, the other business units need, that is outside of the, the scope of what that designer can physically do, they will send it to an agency. So we'll say agency X, and they'll charge X amount of euros, because uh, it's a German company, and they'll, they'll charge X amount of euros. And it's like, wait a minute, I can just send this to him, and he can do it with without me having to pay the extra money? We'll just send it to him. And, exactly, he's, yeah. and he's already in the building, so because he's in the building, we can kind of have more creative control. We can have more opportunities for um, just saving money. It re reality is probably just saving money. <laughs> but but I was like, yo, it's an opportunity for me to learn. Now I went from just doing emails in the Puma.com. Now I'm working on the Puma YouTube channel. I was, I was recording videos for that. I was doing um, digital billboards like um, the Foot Locker in Manhattan doing the entire the entire front of the store okay. um, outside and inside it went um, recording videos doing product photography it started with product photography so now um, shooting pictures of shoes shooting pictures of people um, so they gave you a little more creative so. yeah they gave me way more room to grow than what my like, initial what, position was exactly and that's how it is to this day and the pandemic amplified that to like amplified the creative control or amplified your creativity in general create it amplified creative opportunities during the process of learning you're gonna see a lot of graphic designers or just creative people in general that you're gonna want to like learn how to do what they do and it's so easy once you figure it out what they do is so easy to kind of mimic your style after them which is fine, like there's nothing wrong with that, but like you gotta kind of create a niche for yourself. You have to find your own lane in a sense. Yeah, yeah. You can't just like look at somebody's work and be like, I'm gonna do it exactly like him. It's yeah, like, exactly. Because you're always gonna be the second. There's always an original to a copy. Yeah, exactly. Because everybody takes from everybody, but it's like, how are you going to use it and manipulate it to your advantage? And, and create your own from that, you know what your I mean? Own lane, yeah. Just like music or like with any other creative, like for example, like rap, like it was only one way. You know, it was like the boom bap and that was pretty much it. Now you got like the emo rap, Uzi's. you got, yeah, you got, you got gangster rap, bro. you got everything, you know, drill music, like you got everything. And it's like, there's certain artists that, like I said, don't fit into one box. Exactly. They tap into other people's bubbles, they tap into other genres, they're really versatile, like Drake, for example. Like Drake yeah. will go into drill, he'll go into Afro beats, he'll go into R&B, then he'll come into his own lane, which is his little rap. Yeah. That he used to do with like Lil Wayne flow, and then he'll go into all these different lanes. So it's like, yeah. you can't just copy from a person and take their whole style. You have to literally, you could use a little bit from what they've done and make it into your own, basically. Exactly. Perfect. That's exactly, that's, to me, is when you start growing that's when you're gonna start seeing the growth. Obviously, we're in the middle of studying. Nobody, nobody likes to study or anything like that. But as you're learning, as you're applying yourself, when you're, you know, when you're creating your own style and you figure it out, you're like, okay, I got it. I got the next big thing. It's like that anticipation, that, that excitement. It's like, wow, I got the next big thing. Like, and then there, you're literally gonna like never, like, it's not gonna feel like work anymore. At that point, is for at least for me. It didn't feel like work anymore. Once I figured out, once I learned how to do what I'm doing and what my style was and what I liked, then I was like, boom, I got it. Now, like now, I I want I don't ever want to stop working. Like, you were just you know, creating. Yeah, it was so much fun. It's it still is fun, you know. As obviously as you get into the monotony of like, you know, kind of rules and work and money gets involved, you have to do things for whoever's paying you you have to kind of do it a little bit their way 
but when you're doing like the freelance jobs and like you know your freestyle that's so to me that's like the most fun in the world and that's when you come up with your best pieces because you're gonna do stuff that you never did before because you're just gonna be like yo why don't we do this instead and you can literally go off and that could be the best thing that you've ever done creatively at that point keep it a stack bro i think i mean my humble opinion my honest man i think you need to go freelance bro I see. I, I'm. I'm not even. I'm not even trying to joke or nothing. Yeah. Like I see the passion and the fuel in your eyes, bro. When you're talking about freelance work, yeah. not saying it wasn't like that with Puma. Yeah. I'm just saying, like I, I think you might need to go freelance, bro. Honestly, <laughs> you need to give it to us, bro. Like that passion, that excitement, bro. That's that's what you should be working towards, bro. You could. Who knows? You could probably, possibly, build your agency earlier than you even thought. I think, bro, I think on the overall Dream Experience podcast, I think this is this is where you're figuring it out, bro. This is a podcast for self-awareness, and I'm telling you from a person who's really self-aware. I'm looking at you, bro. I seen the, I'm not saying you didn't have the same excitement for Puma. Shout out to Puma. But <laughs> but I'm saying, like, your energy, your face, the way the, the light in your eyes, the way it changed when you were talking about freelance work, yeah. I feel like a part of you is missing that. You keep it a stack. Yeah. I think that... I wouldn't I, I wouldn't necessarily say that only because as as much as freelance work is like creative and it's fun you gotta you gotta be for what I'm trying to do in terms of my goals and my personal my personal not only building my career but building self like you kind of have to come down to the real world a little bit as I was speaking about um, the photographer that I was talking about earlier um, his journey like like for me it's it's his own path that's what he's doing freelance and I, that's what i was doing prior to even getting hired but the, uh, where i'm at now the problem with that is that i'm not making i'm, I'm gonna be keeping a hundred i'm not making enough money to live off of freelance work okay like i need that structure in order to have that stagnant income and the freelance work can be Download like a side piece and that side piece is what what keeps my creative juices going is what keeps the the creative you know energy within myself but you know I, you still need that stagnant that consistent income and i think that that's what this has provided me but even doing you know new like even going like speaking about the projects that i've been working on for the company like that's where I can kind of get that little freelance energy that you were kind of referring to okay. earlier when I'm doing stuff outside. Obviously, I love what I do in terms of my role, and, I, and that's it's perfect for where I'm at right now. So even with your structure, as long as you get a little taste, you'll be high. Yeah. Of the freelance. If I still get that fix. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta get that little fix. Like, yeah. I, like an addict, we gotta get for that little sure. fix. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Because, yo, like, I feel like if, and this is, it, it, I don't know, this could have probably applied to anybody, but like when you start working within your passion, you're going to hit a point where it, it becomes kind of com where you become complacent because now your passions turn into a consistent bit of income, which is great. That's what everybody should strive for. But like, where are you going to get that? That you got to go back to your roots a little bit on that because that's what keeps your fuel up. That's what keeps you from from it feeling like a job like for example like if you're a basketball player yeah you can make it to the nba and that's great and being in the playoffs and all that but doing open run in the summertime putting that work in going into those open gyms like going well, back to the basics yeah that's where you're gonna like that's where it's it's no longer a business it's not a job it's fun you know what i mean and it's in that in that comparison in that analogy that's what i'm that's what i'm referring to like for me i have to figure out how to keep that energy within me going while still, you know, holding on to my responsibilities to get the consistent income that I need so that I can move towards the steps of financial freedom because I'm like, I'm be honest, without this job, I'm not paying off my student loans as fast as I'm paying them off. I'm not going to be able to jump into a Roth IRA. So you're using like, Puma as a vehicle to achieve your financial freedom in the future. Yeah. While at the same time, turning my passion into a career into a realistic career because like my degree has nothing to do with what i'm doing i'm, I'm i got a psychology degree like i have a bachelor's but it's a psychology degree it's not it's not anywhere related to what i'm doing now um but 
I'm, I'm getting the best, best of both worlds. I'm being practical and getting a practical job. And for me as a young man, me trying to move out on my own, do my own thing. You need that I, You need that. You need that. Um, you have to live in the real world. I can't sit here and be... I would love to be freelance. and But, like, the way that works is, like, I could get, you know, three jobs in a week. And then the week after, I don't get another job for another three months. Like that's okay. the way that's the that's the game of freelance unless you have a a big clientele. I, mean, I feel like that's like, I feel like I see I see what you're saying, but I feel like that's that's what fuels that, that's what fuels entrepreneurs. Like right, right, right. you not knowing like oh I'm when nice. your next client is gonna be, you gotta work for it, bro. Oh, heck that's yeah. that's what fuels heck the yeah. hunger. So I feel like for me in general, like let's talk about the podcast. Like not everybody wants to be on a podcast or like there's some guests that I get on that people, you know, they might act bougie or people that I want to come on, but they don't want to come on. But like just the chase of me hitting you up, me liking your pictures, me trying to connect with you. It's like every month I'm booked and right. people, all the guests that come on here, I'll tell you this right now. They're not hitting me up. I'm hitting them up. Mm-hmm. There's a select few people that hit me up and I'm like, come on the show, bro. Like for you, I hit you up. You yeah. didn't hit me up. Yeah. I get hit up constantly, bro, constantly, constantly, but it's just the chase. That's what I enjoy. Like, I enjoy... It's the hustle. The hustle, the chase, the grit, like you said. Like, I love chasing, like, ooh, I see this model here that's from Lawrence. Oh, I just found her. I found out about her. I start following her page. I start following her brand. It's like, that's dope. Let me hit her up to see if she's down. If she's not down, I'm going to go find people around her that can talk about me. I'm going to go find people around her. I'll probably hit up their people. Yo, bro, how you feel about this girl? Oh, yo, how do you know this person? Like, I build it around this, like... I'm just hungry, bro. I feel like I see what you're saying with the practicality, but I feel like when you get too much into that practical life, you start to lose some type of hunger because you get complacent with the situation. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. So, like I said, for me personally, I'd say for the kids or the people that are coming up, you know, try to put yourself out there. Like, do the freelance thing for a few. Like, do it. You might not have the consistent income, but the growth that you're gonna attain is gonna be drastic. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be no complacency there, and you're just, and you're gonna have to work. Cause I've been through it, bro. Like I sell sneakers as well, and there was a time where I had nothing. Like I just had to sell sneakers, straight selling sneakers. Still to this day, I gotta sell sneakers, sell sneakers. It's like if I don't hustle and I don't put in that work, I'm not gonna get no money. Yeah. There's gonna be no money coming to no me. No income. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like I feel like entrepreneurs or people with that type of blood, you gotta enjoy the chase more than the money more than the fruit gotta of the trust labor. the process you gotta trust the process yeah but i feel like bro like i said like my answer's not gonna change that's my opinion oh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. i, I feel like it. for you I respect it. you need to get out of puma bro not not right now you're in a great position but eventually i want to say 10 years down the line but eventually you got to try this freelance thing and go all out bro and hustle bro and I, i'm t- and i promise you bro it's it's not necessarily the the what you achieve after it's it's the it's the process that you're gonna enjoy the yeah. most. Like you reaching out to this person that you couldn't get to, and then like two three months later, that person hits you up like, "Yo, bro, I seen your work. How, like, how do you feel that? Mm-hmm. How do you feel like that will make you feel like you feel amazing? Yeah, you know what I'm absolutely. saying? There's people that I hit up in the beginning of my process that dubbed me, yeah. and then later on. They're hitting me up like, yo, bro, I seen your interview, that was fire. Or when I seen them, yo, I seen the interview, that was fire. Yo, we're going to do an interview. That feels better than better to me than me being in, you know, a specific situation. I'm or just saying. a paycheck. Exactly. So I, I think, I think like, I see I see what you're saying. Like, you meet a lot of people. But I feel like eventually, not now, but you need to put yourself out there, bro. Yeah. And this is, and this is like, I'm, I'm, I'm blunt and I'm raw and I'm honest, but I feel like you have the talent. I'm going to keep it a stack. Appreciate that, bro. You, you have the talent to do it, bro. I'm telling you, bro. Because I even used you for one of my events. Yeah. And that flyer was fire. Yeah, appreciate it. Bro. I'm telling you, so like, yeah. bro, I'm telling you, bro. You're putting yourself out of your comfort zone, but I'm telling you, bro. You take the extra step. The amount of growth you think you achieved while being in Puma is going to triple, quadruple, Quintuple, if that's even a word. Bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, because when when you're to the point where it's like you need to hustle to eat, as opposed to hustling because of your situation, it's just gonna be different. That's all I'm saying. I think if anybody can learn from even my story, it's always about. I think people see the finish line, and like ref- what you were referring to earlier, they're not trusting the process. Like you always like. And the best thing to have is a vision. Say, oh, I want to do 
I want to do this, right? Or I'll put it into simpler terms. I want to make it to the NBA. For sure. Not everybody's number one overall pick. Not everybody's a first rounder. More likely than not, you, you might have to go into the G League to get a spot on a summer league team to then get on the bench of a, of a, of a, of a franchise and then to be a starter. You know, on Jimmy Butler, like, like that type exactly, of thing. Like, yeah. You have like, and I think for me, it's more satisfying, even like being where I'm at now, knowing that the job before or the job before, like, it's always about getting to the job that will get you to the next job. Okay. You know what I mean? It, it from, like, you know, to think that like I was literally working off of an old I cracked iPhone five S. To now, I'm like in a in a office is crazy to me. Like I never thought that. But even before I was working on my phone, I didn't. I was chilling in the ESPs. I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> yeah. So for to see to see yourself come from the ESPs to a corporate setting in Puma, yeah. being one of the ten people that were picked is uh, is, it's is crazy, commendable because, and amazing. And 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 Lawrence, I like I. I I think Lawrence kind of bred that hunger in me because not only was I chilling there, but you know, I lived on Tenney Street, I lived on Newton Street, I lived on Leah, I lived like we moved around, I lived on Cross Street, like I moved around in the city and and my thing is just like to come from where I had to come from to get to where I am now is to me that it, it, there's no better feeling because now it's like I'm showing other people in my situation as as a 15 year old kid i'm showing the 15 year old me somewhere else like yo you can do it like you know what i mean sure. you can do whatever it is you want to do like no 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 aspiration is too big or too out of the realm of possibility as long as you got a plan and you put in the grunt work you can get to wherever it is you're trying to go and that's just applicable to anything in life you know what i mean you, like you said, you could be the next, you could be the black Gary V in like four <laughs> years. Like, you know, you don't. I am the know. black Gary V. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, you but, know what I'm saying? But like, here's, here's a quote that sticks with me all the time, bro. Yeah. And I think about this all the time. And it literally drives me to this day. If your vision doesn't scare you, you're not thinking big enough. Yeah. And that's hits me. It sounds simple, but if you really think about it, that's so deep. Your vision should scare you. You should be thinking so big that you're like, damn, can I really accomplish that? Because at the end of the day, if you fall short from your biggest vision, you're already overachieved. Exactly. Exactly. You're shooting for the stars. If you shoot for the stars, you're going to hit the moon. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, for sure. That's crazy. <laughs> Dope conversation, bro. But I'm going to transition into the game called Say That. Okay. And with this game, I'm going to tell you a word or phrase. You're gonna tell you the first thing that comes to your mind. Right. But yeah. the, one of the rules is that you can't repeat the same answer, same word. You can't repeat the same as the previous answer. As the previous answer okay. or the previous previous. Answer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't repeat anything. You have okay. to, it has to be all raw. Okay. Right. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Say that. <laughs> yeah, say that. I yeah. right, say that. <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's get it, Lawrence. Quick. It's supposed to be quick. Let oh, it's gotta be quick. Quick. Right. You ain't thinking for Lawrence three minutes. Passion. Creativity. Hunger. Graphic design. Tool. Puma. Brand. Man, you're going so quick, you're fucking me up. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, photography. Vision. Man, bro, you good at this, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> well, man, say that. Say that. Right, say, say that. that. <laughs> support, support. Family. Family. Rock with that. That's the drip. And the wave. And the overall drip experience podcast. It's the real deal. Rock with you, man. <laughs> the end of the day, don't forget to subscribe to the channel at Bash the Drip TV. Don't forget to follow my guy. Shout out your Instagram yeah, real quick. Deshaun the Blessed. Deshaun no the Blessed. No periods, no underscores, none of that. Deshaun the Blessed on Instagram. Um, Stop playing with him. Stop playing with him. <laughs> Not there. <laughs> I'm about to go. Follow me on Elf man. <laughs> Follow him on everything. Deshaun the Blessed, man. Bastard Drip TV. And at the end of the day, it's Bastard Drip, the flyest in the city, a.k.a. the young intellectual. It's Deshaun, junior production artist, graphic designer. For Puma. 
Absolutely, man. And we Lando out. Said, we out.